This is Law Journal. It was about 10 years ago that I was seated on this very set with a couple of attorney comrades of mine, and we were seated to speak about defamation and freedom of speech. Little did we know that that very hour that Iraq was going to attack Israel, and we ended up speaking about free speech during wartime for two hours. Tonight, I had come to the studios of WFMZ-TV to discuss criminal law with four criminal trial attorneys. Little did I know that perhaps the greatest crime ever committed against the United States would take place today. So, tonight, we're opening up the telephone lines. Yes, we are lawyers, and yes, we're going to talk about some of the legal ramifications and, and how what happened today will affect all of our lives, our rights, our constitutional rights. We're going to talk about federal statutes and terrorism, but more than that, more importantly, we're opening up the telephone lines to you in the Lehigh Valley, to those of you in Philadelphia, for those of you watching in western New Jersey tonight and say, look, we understand something. We're all human beings, so we have spiritual, emotional, and mental concerns, if you will. We're going to give you an opportunity to express some of those things tonight. We think that's actually pretty healthy. And then when the president gets on the air at 9 o'clock, we will certainly cut away to speak or actually to listen to him, and then perhaps thereafter we'll continue our discussion. First, I'd like to thank you for joining us tonight, and certainly our prayers are with uh, the entire American people. Above and beyond that, I want to thank my guest for joining me tonight. Again, Phil Lauer joining me uh, to my immediate left from Easton, Pennsylvania, a criminal trial attorney, and uh, Phil in practice uh, now for several decades and has handled uh, some of the toughest criminal cases, as has his compatriot next to him, John Waldron, uh, seated right next to uh, Phil. John is with the law firm of Huber and Waldron, a former prosecutor and now a criminal defense attorney for, for many years and handling, uh, again, some very tough cases from homicide on down. Seated next to attorney John Waldron is Everett Gillison, joining us for the first time tonight. Everett is a public defender in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, practicing for 16 years. And last but certainly not least, our prosecutor joining us tonight, attorney William Matz from Northampton County. Again, Bill Matz and er Everett and John and Phil again, thank you for joining me and all of our, our our viewers out there tonight to discuss something that is not entirely up our alley, but again, we can bring in some of the legal ramifications and we can talk to you tonight. So again, the 1-800 number will appear on the screen, 1-800-426-4625, and let's discuss this America under attack. Uh, I dare say tonight, today, as we sit back uh, in, the, uh, in the shadow of this tragedy today, we know one thing, that today's occurrence is going to impact our American institutions, it's going to impact our religious institutions, our financial institutions, and I dare say it's going to impact our legal institutions as well. Guys, let's go right on down the line. What are your, uh, what are your insights and uh, what are your opinions on that? Let's go to Phil Lauer first. I don't know. I, I'm really still assimilating it. I, it it's, it's, a, it's so new to realize that uh, we're vulnerable to this sort of thing. Uh, obviously, I, I want a response, and that's the citizen in me and the lawyer in me wants to make sure it's a measured response and that we don't do some harm in the process. Mm -hmm. John. Uh, after what's happened today, Chris, uh, I look at this as a, an act of war, basically, and, and I think we have to respond that way. And, and I think tonight I'll probably speak more as a U.S. citizen th than as a lawyer, but... Um, I, I think that we have to respond quickly and firmly uh, to what's happened today. Okay. Moving on down the line, let's go to our public defender tonight, to Everett Gillison. Go ahead, Everett. I think that the uh, tragedy is one that is going to keep us um, focused uh, for a long time. I think that that's going to be the issue, and, and, and I think the question that you've, that you've raised for our program is what we're going to be talking about all this time. How is this going to impact? Uh, people will be wanting instantaneous responses, instantaneous um, uh, new laws and all the other kind of things. And sometimes that's not the way to go. We just have to think about what we're going to do before we do something. And I think that uh, the laws that we have on the books, I think that after we, we, we really take a look at them and we discuss them, we'll find that we're, we're adequately protected. The question is, how do we respond to what has happened to us as a country? All right. And, and again, uh, giving my prosecutor the opportunity to, to chime in as well. Bill Matz, uh, what about this? Well, I feel the same as the other three have expressed uh, their feelings and certainly a bundle of emotions as a citizen of this country. And, and 
recoiling and, and trying to soul search as to what this means to us and to our nation, uh, what the legal responses will be, what the government responses will be, but certainly, in, as John said, uh, to look at what's happened from the point of view that uh, we are under siege, we have been attacked, and uh, that causes us to react, and hopefully appropriately, but uh, one which is uh, directed toward uh, the, the wrongs and the, uh, the attack that we've, we've, we've experienced as a nation and as a people. You know, it's interesting that already tonight we can hear the ire and the anger of the American people. Orrin Hatch uh, has spoken a couple of times already today and said that we are not a people to be trifled with. And obviously there's anger. And obviously many of us in this nation want revenge and want revenge right away. I think when we saw pictures on CNN just a couple of hours ago of the, the bombs going off over Kabul, uh, Afghanistan, thinking that perhaps we've already taken an immediate retaliation, uh, I think all of us uh, probably felt uh, good for us, in, in case, if in fact it was us who, uh, the United States, who had uh, launched that attack. As we as we hear now, that is not the case. Uh, however, what I'm hearing from all of you folks is that we're already beginning to say, get tough, but be tempered. Make right. certain that that we're not going to jump into anything. I think the trick is to, you know, there's an old saying among lawyers that, that bad cases make bad laws, and. Whenever uh, a court is confronted with some uh, outrageous set of facts, they're likely to come up with some outrageous answer. This is an outrageous set of facts. This is a horrible circumstance. So to, d to make a decision about how things are going to be done in a, uh, in a society for forever hereafter based on this may, may, not, be, may not be the right, the right approach. Mm -hmm. I, obviously. Sir? Uh, we, we have to do uh, an investigation, and but I think it has to be a quick investigation. I think it has to be thorough, but I think it has to be quick because I think Americans want an answer. Uh, th they want the right answer, but I think uh, they want it in a timely fashion because I think that as a result of what happened, um, uh, decisions are being made quickly among the American people, and I think that uh, as I said, I mean, they're going to want quick answers, but we have to temper it with a good investigation. Bill Matz, I know that you've got a comment for us, well, too. Well, certainly the challenge that I see immediately is, is the challenge that's going to occur, the liberties that we have. We live in a free society, and we've, we've uh, lived in a way which maybe we've become complacent to the, uh, the benefits of that. And, the, and in the response, it may push us toward issues which will challenge those liberties and the freedoms we have, and that's where... We as uh, lawyers certainly will see that, uh, I'm sure of it, uh, as they try to recoil from this thing and maybe restrict the movement of people or look at issues of entrance into this country and a lot of things which we've taken for granted as a free, free, free travel, free, free movement. Um, that's certainly the fear that many would have. Uh, uh, and that's interesting, again, coming from a prosecutor. You know, uh, Bill, uh, many times in this program, we've done programs on Fourth Amendment, uh, search and seizure, unreasonable search and seizure. And normally, it's the prosecutor says, hey, look, we've got to do our job. Obviously, we as Americans have rights, but we have to do our job as well. Give us a little bit more elbow room. Don't you think now, and again, I know we're not talking about a state prosecutorial matter. This is federal. This is international. Don't you think now that those powers that be, whether it's, well, whatever those agencies are, CIA, what have you, are going to... FBI are going to say, let's let go of some of these straps and let us get in there and exercise uh, our abilities to find out who these people are. Well, certainly I had a conversation with a prosecutor earlier today, and one of the things that came right off the top of his tongue was, let's restrict all visas and, uh, of people coming into this country. Let's, let's look at the foreign employment situation, things like that, which would be <coughs> fairly typical state responses to the needs to secure the, uh, the, you know, what's occurred here. Uh, you know what, uh, folks, we've got, obviously, a full phone line, so we're going to give you folks a voice, as we said we would, and again, when possible, we're going to we'll tie it into our legal experience. So let's go to, I'm sorry, uh, Kelly, who's up first tonight? Robert is up first tonight. Robert, uh, good evening. You are on this uh, special edition of Law Journal. Good afternoon. Good evening. How are you doing? Good. What's your question or your comment, uh, Robert? Actually, I don't have a question, but what I would like to say is, you know, the people who did this are cold-blooded murderers. And, uh... And I don't think that we should just go bomb a whole country because of what a few coward, cold-hearted, cold-blooded killers did. Find the people responsible and bring them to justice. A whole country did not do this. A group of people did this. 
Thank you for your comment tonight, Robert. You know, what's interesting, too, is that it wasn't that long ago when those terrorists, uh, of course, uh, when the government officials foiled the last attack or the attempted attack on the World Trade Center, mm -hmm. it wasn't just recently that I think the last federal decision came down uh, finding uh, several individuals guilty. And so uh, justice, American justice, was done in that instance. Of course, now a lot of people are saying, yeah, well, it wasn't good enough. Well, the, the, the question about the timing of this has been interesting because um, we have started to learn that the finding of guilt was entered in June of this year. The sentencing was supposed to be tomorrow. And it was supposed to be tomorrow at the U.S. courthouse, which is right next to the World Trade Center. Now that I was not aware of. And that is um, one of the things that they're saying is actually perhaps a little bit of cause and effect that we will have to get into some kind of evaluation of uh, and, and to sit back and to say whether or not there is this link that, we're, that we need in order to say who actually did this. Mm -hmm. I think that we are going to get into a lot of um, sometimes we can't really get an answer for who did it because most of the people that actually did it are already dead. Um, they were, this was a suicide mission. And as a result of being a suicide mission, those that are going to be held responsible, we're now going to be looking for the co-conspirators that are not present at the scene of the crime. Mm -hmm. Your caller, nonetheless, though, makes, a, I think, a perfectly valid point that we need to look at this with some precision and not uh, react for the sake of reacting. Absolutely. Uh, you know, although what is interesting is that uh, some people are calling for some frontier justice, and, you, and I think we can understand that today. I mean, even John, in his tempered statement, said, you know, we want to take some action if we can find any kind of nexus, any kind of thread between what happened today and any kind of group, we need to act quickly. We do. And that's not going to be in a court of law, uh, as happened uh, this last time with Osama bin Laden's uh, co-terrorists. Right. And, and, and normally, we want to find who did something, bring them back to the United States, and then prosecute them. And, and uh, that, that's the normal uh, procedure. But I've heard folks speaking today, and uh, considering this an act of war, if we find the people that did this, I don't think uh, our government necessarily, if we had to kill them, we would. Congressmen said that today, senators. I, I think the American people Death would penalty. feel the same way. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so uh, I think... Not unlike Oklahoma. Right. Ideally, bring them back and try them. But if we find them and, and uh, uh, they're killed, um, I, I think that... Um, justice would be served in the eyes of the American public. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Scott next. Scott, hello. You're on uh, Law Journal. Yeah, how you doing? Good. What's your question or comment? Uh, well, everybody's talking about justice. If, if you really look at it, did they give us justice? We didn't get no justice out of this. You know, they just come over here. Another thing is, you know, we're leaving all these people into this country with visas and green cards. Are they really checking? Did you have people? a question about the no-fly zone? Yeah. Go ahead. Get to yeah. that. About the Pentagon. Here, here we have the Pentagon. That's the no-fly zone. Now, how did this guy get in there? Well, I, you know, I think that those are all good questions. I think today, and one question that I had, uh, and, and I haven't even heard it answered yet, is that how does a plane that's leaving Boston and and is is going to Los Angeles takes an immediate uh, takes some sort of drastic 90 degree dog leg south to New York, and no one in the FAA, uh, you know, no control tower. No one notices this. Uh, I mean, have you, again, I, I haven't heard all the news today, and I know that there's so much news coming at us. Have any of you gentlemen, uh, Bill included, have you heard, of, heard about this? I, I saw a, a pilot on one of the national networks who uh, they tracked by radar right. two planes, I believe, out of Logan that were heading to the West Coast, of course, full of fuel, which is one of the reasons they did this, in the air for 30 or 40 minutes before contact was made with uh, the, the buildings. Now, of course, I don't know what was happening in the meantime. I don't know who was flying that plane, but it was in the air 30 or 40 minutes. And I don't know if there's distress calls or, or what occurs, but obviously they saw and tracked on radar uh, this plane or, or uh, actually maybe two planes coming in and, um, you know, viewing this. Ever, ever it was uh, talking about a 
uh, technological leap that may be made with respect to the planes. Why don't you tell right. them about that, Everett? The uh, question is, has been made that uh, one of the things uh, that they want to try to do is to have one of these distress signals that has been made or given to the pilots so that when they're hijacked, not only would the terrorist or whatever, when that initial thing happens, they would be able to alert the FAA, hijack in progress. Uh, and that as a result of the hijack in progress being done, they would then be able to take a step. My problem is, is that look at the next question that you would have for uh, some American fighter pilot who would have to go up to intercept this plane. It's full of American citizens. There is a hijacking on board. Can you imagine the decision to, to that would have to have been made? Are we going to blow this thing up in the middle of the ocean? Are we going to blow it up over the middle of New York? I mean, what are we going to do and how are we going to impact on all of these kind of decisions, and you'd only have 30 minutes with which to make that kind of decision. True, but, but doesn't it, uh, aren't you incredulous, uh, members of my panel tonight, aren't you incredulous that no one, uh, again, no control tower, the FD, FAA, no government official knew that these planes were hijacked? That's... It must have been, now, and you think about the preparation that this group must have uh, have gone through over the last several months. This is not just a, this is not a hijacking, for example, like out of Dulles. One can understand. One is out of Dulles. That One is hit, out of Dulles that, 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 hits, hit, the that hit the Pentagon. There's only a matter of minutes right. that, that uh, you know, the FEA could have done something about that. And maybe uh, control towers are not in constant contact or communication with an airplane. But over a 20 or 25 minute period of time, uh, anyone in my audience, any of you here joining me tonight, aren't you incredibly us that that some red flag didn't go up at some point in time that someone did not know that this what this plane had been hijacked or maybe it has been I, we I, just don't know that we just don't I'm know sure we, we'll find out That's about exactly it but right. I, one of the things that amazes me is that the the wasn't the first fl uh, plane a red flag and, right. and <laughs> what wasn't somebody looking obviously they were and, and we're we're second guessing people who were trying real hard I'm sure to do a good job but it sure indicates to me that somebody needs to take a, a little more careful look at that whole system. You know, folks, again, uh, we are coming to you live tonight. And normally, Law Journal is seen on Monday nights. But uh, tonight, we were here in the studio ready to tape some shows with the criminal trial attorneys. And uh, Barry Fisher, our general manager, said, why don't we go ahead and talk to the folks in the Greater Lehigh Valley and Philadelphia and in western New Jersey, open up the phone lines, give you a voice. Uh, again, we're, we're tying in some of the legal ramifications of what's uh, been going on today. Uh, but we want to hear your, your heart felt emotions as well. So let's go to Ron, who's calling from Philadelphia. He's up next on tonight's show. Uh, Ron, uh, welcome to Law Journal. Good evening, sir. Uh, I won't waste your time. I want to make a statement more than a question. Go right ahead. My concern is that we as a society may have to take a closer look at the civil liberties that we have experienced and, ex and grown to expect uh, in order to make this a, a safer and more secure environment where we can live and grow and be successful as a society. Thank you. Yeah, uh, kind of where we started tonight, right? The legal institutions may change. We may find that things become a little bit more stringent. John. I, I, I think um, uh, that's true. I think that w whether it takes us two or three hours before we can take a flight uh, to another part of the country because they're checking, they're x-raying the plane, x-raying our bags, x-raying us, checking things out. Uh, I, I think that may be a price we have to pay for the greater good of um, uh, having this not repeat itself. And I think that will happen. And I think the American public will go along with that if you speak to them now. I hope they hang over there, or, or hang in there, I should say, over the long haul, you know, a couple years from now when, uh, you know, you're waiting in line and uh, you're, you're ready to go and you got to wait an extra hour for some type of... Um, surveillance, inspection, x-ray. Well, the, the other issue to me is, uh, it goes back to the previous question a little bit too, is the critique on security which the institu this incident has brought to us. And in that sense, the intelligence gathering of our federal government has been more geared toward technical issues than human issues. And we, because of disclosure issues in our law and so on, it's difficult to get good intelligence which may help prevent this sort of thing or certainly sidetrack it. So you're not relying on just uh, last-minute decisions when there's a hijacker on board, but you're trying to intercept those sort of things before they get into the country. Bill, and, do you th I, go ahead, Phil. Uh, well, I was just going to say, I think that you, you're, both of you have outlined two very different kinds of uh, things that may change. A little bit of uh, delay in a departure time is something anybody can live with, but a some sort of vast... Uh, 
expansion of the government's ability and desire to gather intelligence, I, I think is not such a good thing. And I think it's, uh, hopefully we'll have a more measured approach. Let's go to James from Allentown next. James, go ahead. Oh, I want to know why we as Americans are, are hated so much. Well, what do we do? Can someone please uh, explain it to me? Well, okay, it's a broad, that's about as broad as it gets, but Everett, quick question, quick answer there, and then we'll go to our next call. Everyone that, that, that you, when you're the top dog in any institution, uh, you're going to have people come after you no matter what uh, area of the fence you're on, and when you're the top dog, people don't like you. Uh, that's just the way it is, and that's the way the world is made. You have to basically look at it and say that this is what we are going to do in a way that will um, that people we have to always be prepared of to course be taken we, on. we we are we are well known for using our military presence around the world obviously we believe it's tempered it's justified but you know if you're in a town and your town gets blown up even though uh, the Americans went in because of terrorism you know as, as, a, as a child or a citizen living in that town you're not going to make that connection you're going to believe you know your country's uh, fathers and their rules and their governments and so uh, obviously we are going to be hated simply because of our military presence around the world. The other thing I want to add is, is that I really want to ask people to, when I say take a tempered approach to this, I was, I think all of us were around when the Oklahoma City bombing took place, and we all jumped to a conclusion that it was international terrorism, um, and it found out that it wasn't. Um, we really don't know yet, and I, I would ask people to, you know, tonight is a day that you have to sit back and you have to let the shock wear off, heal a little bit, try to understand what's happening, deal with that, that, that aspect of, of the revenge feelings, and then after you've done those kind of things, then look at how we're going to go forward. But don't just assign or ascribe that we know who did this just yet, because we really don't know. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, Osama bin Laden's group has denied being involved in this. Uh, and again, depending on who you can trust or who you can believe, obviously no official government official has come out and said we're almost certain, although I heard former Secretary of Defense uh, William Cohen say tonight that uh, the United States government is 90 percent certain as to who has done that, who has done this. Uh, let's go to, is it Patrick? Yes, Patrick from Emmaus is up next tonight. Patrick, welcome to this uh, special edition of uh, tonight's Law Journal. Yes, hello. Um, uh, you mentioned about taking a tempered approach, uh, things like that, and that brings up a very good point of um, Every, all the news channels are talking about uh, revenge and everything like that. Well, the, the problem with that is it, it's hard to place revenge onto a country who believes that, uh, whose religion believes that dying in war is the highest possible honor that they can achieve. Mm -hmm. And well, uh, I, I just think that any action is, is going to have to be uh, very long thought out and taken very slowly. Well, isn't it interesting, uh, Tom Brokaw, who uh, wrote uh, The Greatest Generation, a bestseller, uh, was on NBC uh, Live uh, this morning and said this is this generation's Pearl Harbor. And certainly we know that at Pearl Harbor and later in that war, uh, America met uh, kamikaze pilots, suicide pilots for the first time. This is the same zeal. Mm -hmm. This is the same religious zealousness that this country uh, saw some 60 years ago. Uh, assuming you know who, who's responsible. Again, which, which again. Would, yes. can I just? Although add, we know that they're zealots. Not, I mean, well, if plainly they hijacked, they're zealots. <laughs> if they're suicidal uh, pilots, I, I and they obviously knew how to fly these planes, they were right. giving up their their lives for Allah or whomever. Can I just say that uh, I heard, uh, apropos the caller's reference to a tempered response, I heard um, Mayor Giuliani. Uh, I think this afternoon encouraging New Yorkers. Um, not to give in to anger, hatred, uh, that sort of thing, and making the point that it's precisely that kind of thinking that brings about this kind of action and that uh, uh, we need to motor back a little bit uh, and, and make a response that meets the situation but doesn't condemn whole peoples, whole countries for the actions of what uh, has to be the actions of a few mad people. And, and today uh, on, on uh, national TV they had some Muslim men and women who basically said it's not our religion to go out and, and wreak this kind of havoc, cause this kind of terror, that it, it may be um, a, a small minority that do this, but don't condemn us 
our religion. That's not what we're taught. That's not what we're about. So I, I, I think that we have to be careful in, in uh, once again, condemning a, a nation or a religion because it's a few individuals. Mm -hmm. Do, do we actually think that, uh, again, we, we believe that uh, what has happened today may impact our rights in this country, our, our legal rights? Uh, let's just take, take a, a, a hop for a moment. Uh, one of our precious rights under the Constitution is the right uh, to, to believe as, as we wish and to express ourselves as we wish. Ostensibly, even in this great country of ours, with fear, can we see that that tenant, that uh, you know, one of, one of the firm legs of, of our Constitution possibly be rocked? been rocked repeatedly. <laughs> it was rocked during the Second World War. It was rocked during the, the Cold War. Yes. I mean, we've, mm -hmm. we've, we've rocked it repeatedly and we bring it back each time. But, but it's easy to take away liberties to, to get at that foe, whoever that foe is. Just, I, I think what all of us are saying is that, that one has to be a little careful about how that's done mm -hmm. and not throw the baby out with the bathwater to use a really bad or, if you, or <laughs> metaphor. from the prosecutor's perspective, if you have a crime, you need to swiftly move toward establishing what has happened and swiftly move toward uh, the, uh, the, the perpetrator of that uh, uh, crime. And to delay over dialogue may not be in the best interests of the country or the people either. Well, there's so pr probably no one who's going to disagree with the fact that this administration will not wait. I don't think the Clinton administration would wait. Don't you believe if there is a scintilla of a bit, of a thread, of a suggestion that it's tied uh, ostensibly to one of Omar uh, bin, bin Laden's uh, relatives, that uh, a, a response is going to be swift? Maybe even this week. And again, I know that it's all conjecture. We understand that. But Bill, looking at it, uh, again, a prosecutorial mindset and sometimes is let's do what we have to do. Let's not trample on rights and let's get the job done. I agree. Gentlemen, we're going to be taking some more telephone calls again. We want to remind you, uh, folks, that uh, tonight is a special edition of Law Journal because of what has happened today in uh, New York City and in Washington and in, in Pennsylvania as well, and, and maybe in, in other areas of, of the country uh, that we may not even be aware of right now. And we're taking your telephone calls. We are talking about the legal ramifications of what this day means, but beyond that, we want to take your telephone calls and you express your, your emotions and your thoughts as, as we as Americans uh, go through this uh, very trying day. Let's go to our next telephone call. Mark is up next tonight. Mark, uh, welcome to uh, tonight's program. Thank you. Uh, I, I just wanted to add a comment to what Patrick said earlier, uh, you know, regarding the Muslim uh, beliefs and what have you. Uh, you know, I've been associated with the military for 12 years now. I've been in the Air Force. And with the people like that, and you look at what happened in Afghanistan with the Russians, uh, y you know, there's no solemn belief. These people uh, you cannot, they will get their point across no matter what. Uh, they just, they defeated the Russians and they'll just keep and fight and fight and fight. And, and we just can't, Go ahead. No, no, Go ahead. no matter what retaliatory uh, measures we use, uh, you know, these people are just going to continue to do this because Patrick was exactly right. Uh, you can't defeat a people like this who believe that dying is, is you know, for, for all those beliefs. Uh, well, okay. We did defeat the Japanese who believe the very same thing. And, and I understand what you're saying. Afghanistan did defeat Russia in uh, the Soviet Union back in the 1980s in, a, in, a, in their Vietnam, if you will. Of course, this is a much different story. And I think as CNN News uh, demonstrated tonight, uh, those explosions, those bombs going off uh, over the skyline of Kabul tonight were not American bombs. They were not Western bombs. They were clearly uh, the bombs of an ongoing civil war mm -hmm. that, that is taking place right now in Afghanistan. Didn't we help Afghanistan, though? With the Russians, we did absolutely, which kind of also depicts the schizophrenia of that of that area. I mean, at one time we were friends with uh, with Iran, and then we were friends with Iraq, and back and forth. And uh, you know, it 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 is an area that uh, changes quickly. There, it's an area where countries that uh, that hate us hate each other as well. Yeah, I was going to say you have to be real careful though that that you you don't somehow poison the entire Afghan people. I mean, Bin Laden does not speak for this nation. He speaks for 
uh, what I understand to be a relatively small uh, group of people who have outrageous views. You know, it's interesting. We talk about Afghanistan. Afghanistan has been in the news, but it's been relegated to the back pages. But here's how it may impact what's going on today. Uh, I think it was just in the last two weeks, a report I think I saw in 60 Minutes, is that uh, 12 Christians in that country you know, had the temerity to approach Islam, uh, several Islamic people in that nation, and talk about Jesus Christ. And what ended up happening was they were arrested because it is absolutely against the law to, to even discuss uh, the, the prospect of a Muslim changing their religious beliefs because the religion and the government are one over there. These people are now facing the prospect of execution. I know there are several governments that want to intervene. Just yesterday, and this was on page six in USA Today, the only opposition leader to the Taliban in Afghanistan, I think his influence is something about 5% of the nation in Afghanistan, he was, he was killed yesterday. He was assassinated yesterday. Now, again, it was on page six of USA Today because it's not big news for us. Tomorrow, perhaps, <laughs> Tomorrow, there may be that nexus that we see between the two. And along those Thank lines, God. I think that one of the things that we sometimes forget is that we do take a lot of our own comfort for granted because we don't want to really deal with what's going on outside of our little environment. And that's how I think it really impacts on our institutions. It uh, is very clear that we have to stop being so parochial only thinking about what's going on with us and uh, rather than just dealing with what's going on outside in the international realm because it all matters. It just doesn't matter when we're talking about jobs and NAFTA and, and all that other kind of stuff and how that impacts. It talks about how the entire world is knitted together. And America cannot be fortress America. We can't all of a sudden throw up the, uh, the, the, the lines and say no one will get in, no one will get out because we're going to isolate ourselves up from the world. That's not the way the world is. And when we hear our leaders talking about doing those kinds of things, um, the visas uh, being restricted, the, you know, stopping closing the, the closing the borders, no, those are things that do nothing but exacerbate the problem. We have to actually be able to understand what is going on elsewhere so that we can protect ourselves here in this country. And you know, I've just been told, John, we'll get to your comment in just a moment. I've just been told that I, I believe the president's going to be speaking shortly. We're going to cut away, obviously, uh, for the president's address. We're going to be sitting here in the studio, and depending on what we want to do here at WFMZ, we may continue to field your calls after the president speaks. We don't know. That's in a state of flux as this entire day has been. But we want to let you know we're going to go to the president and then perhaps come back here to the studios and continue to take your phone calls. John, I interrupted you. Some um, Secretary of, of Defense, some previous Secretary of Defense have said that we haven't been spending enough money on our defense, that we've dissembled the CIA, and we don't have um, uh, the agents in the field sitting with these terrorists as they're making decisions to, um, uh, you know, wreak havoc in the United States. So I, I, I agree with that. I think in some respects we, we have to. Um, uh, get more agents out in the field, spend more money, and, and uh, you know, hindsight's always twenty twenty. but I, I think we have to do that, spend the money, get the folks out there so that this uh, wouldn't be repeated. And that's a defense attorney speaking, and I think, you know... That's, that's an American citizen actually speaking. I mean, I'm not, to me, uh, you know, I'm a defense attorney, but this is war, so... But what, uh, the reason I bring that up, John, is because I think, again, sometimes we as attorneys, and, and any of us who have uh, defend, defeated, defended those who are criminally accused, I think we're, we're automatically thought of as being bleeding hearts, not being tough, either on crime or international terrorism. So, again, obviously, John Waldron, first and foremost, an American citizen, uh, shares every bit of that American citizenry with the prosecutor tonight, William Matz. <laughs> but I, but I want to make it real clear. Uh, we as attorneys... Uh, who don't always enjoy the best reputation understand that our American security does come first. And, and again, John, as an American citizen, but realizing that uh, you do defend the, the rights of those who are criminally accused, it's, it's refreshing and it's important to note that, uh, that you say we need to, to go out and, and take these security measures. Increasing those measures for human intelligence, one thing you're certainly going to see is the uh, need to decrease the amount of uh, informational disclosure that the government needs to provide the uh, public. As you may remember, back in the Kuwaiti late Carter, Carter period, he opened up those records to the world, and we lost CIA agents all over the world 
to that disclosure of who they were and who they were associated with. So certainly the, uh, the impact of that change to need for more intelligence is going to also impact on informational disclosures of each of us. But one of the things that you always have to remember is that there's, there's a need-to-know statute that is uh, prevalent in the uh, federal area. And I um, still come from the tradition that says that as an American citizen, we want to have faith in our government. We want to make sure that they're doing the right thing. We also want to make sure that they're doing the right thing in the right way. Um, and while I may not need to know um, what's going on if, uh, right now, going on and how they're going to plan their, their uh, retaliation and all of that, you want to have the confidence that uh, the rogue part of the CIA, which is also part of our illustrious history, um, doesn't be get allowed to just have the fire stoked among it, to have that response to go where it wants to go. Because then we are not standing against what we want to stand for, which is we are the greatest nation in the world for a reason. We do have confidence in our government to represent all of the American interests well, and we can do it right. We don't have to be underhanded and slip to their level in order to respond. And, and I think it's broader than that. I, I, I personally don't think it happens because we have confidence in our government. I think it happens because we have the ability to question our government. We have the ability to look at what they're doing critically, carefully, with all of the information. And to, to me, the greatest crime that could come out of all of that is taking uh, is to allow another country, group, whatever, the, the ability to dismantle that for us, Absolutely. to take it apart and say, okay, we, we, your freedoms are being diminished because we got gotcha. you. And Be I would hate to see that happen. Because the terrorists win then. That's right. They've won. That's exactly And right. we don't want them to ever feel that they've won. You have to defeat evil, not by doing evil, but by remembering that what we are doing is for our greater good. Roy from Reading is up next. Roy, go ahead. You're on the show tonight. Yes, I just want to remind you of uh, two things. Woe to those who give up essential liberty for temporary safety, for in the end they will deserve neither. That was Thomas Jefferson. And also, what if you were given the challenge to defend one of these accused as attorneys? Wouldn't that be either the nightmare or what challenge would it give to you? Thank you for bringing Thomas Jefferson uh, to the table tonight, Roy. I, I really do appreciate that. As you stated it, I said, I think I know who, who said that, but thank you. And it's, 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 a, it's a perfect reminder of, of what we need to continue to remember on through this week and this next month. Uh, as for the second portion of the question, I didn't want to even bring it up tonight. I'm glad that you did, but I will toss <laughs> that to my criminal defense attorneys who are with me tonight. Uh, uh, okay, we are, we're going to have to hold on that. We're, we're being told now that the president is ready to speak. So we're hoping that we're coming back, folks. Stay tuned to WFMZ tonight if we cover this day, this day of tragedy here in the United States.